mountains have always played an important part in God's dealings with his people. Noah's ark sat on the top of Mount Arafat. I'm talking about Noah's ark. It sat on the mount of Arafat. When flood caused rivers to rise until the flood waters receded, God revealed himself to Moses and gave Moses the Ten Commandments for his people Israel. Again on Mount Sinai, Jesus our Lord sat on a mountainside to deliver the Sermon on the Mount where he taught the people about the Beatitudes. Jesus appointed twelve apostles on a mountain according to Mark chapter 3 verse 7 through 19 and in Luke chapter 6 verse 12 through 16. Jesus sent the eleven for the Great Commission on a mountain, Matthew 28, verse 16. The transfiguration, the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ took place on a mount, Matthew chapter 17. Jesus spent his final day walking on the mount to a mountain to die on the cross. The ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ into heaven happened on a mountain top. Acts chapter 1, verse 19. And so clearly we see the significant role mountains play in Scripture. Let us arise and take the mountain. This is a statement laid by Caleb. Caleb had great faith in the power of God. Caleb saw God as one who is greater than his greatest problem. He did not lie about what he, he saw together with the other 11 spies. When Moses sent 12 spies to go and inspect the land God had promised to give to his people. As we read in Numbers chapter 13 and 14, we know that when the spies came and gave their reports, 10 out of the 12 said, yes, the land was good, but they were not able to go and possess the land because the people who were on the land were giants and they saw in their own eyes and they believed in the eyes of the people who were occupying the land that day, the Israelites, the spies, are near grasshoppers. But Joshua and Caleb did not agree with them. They said they were able, they could go and possess the land. And that is why I'm saying that Caleb, who later made a claim in Joshua chapter 14. When indeed Joshua had led the people after the death of Moses unto the promised land and they were sharing the land, he reminded Joshua the promise of God unto him that God had already promised to give him that part of the land which was spontaneous. And Joshua chapter 14, verse 12, Caleb says, Now give me this mountain. It is from here. That we as a congregation, even as we celebrate 10 years, are saying and re that let us arise, and if we come together and arise, we will and can indeed take and possess our land. Come, have faith in the power of God. He saw the giant as well. They were problematic, but he measured the problem in the light of God. And when we will see our problem 
in the light of God. What we will realize is that, yes, we will not lie about our problem, about what we will see, about things that will be surrounding us, but we will not be perturbed by them. Jesus Caleb did not minimize his problems, but because he magnified God, God was so big and bigger than any greatest problem that Caleb faced. Yes, Caleb faced the challenges honestly, sincerely, but he also had faith in God, who is more powerful than any problem. Like Caleb, we too can arise and take every mountain that belongs to us. What we need to do is to learn to do the battle in prayer. Is to learn to do that most significant and strategic thing that our Lord Jesus Christ did was on earth. Prayer. And that is why this morning we come to talk about prayer. My topic for today is Lord teach us to pray. Lord teach us to pray. There may be mountains surrounding us, challenges, spiritual, infrastructure, economic, social, name challenges here and there, marital and family life. But if we could lift up our eyes onto the mountains, where comes from our help? Our help will be coming from the Lord God Almighty, who is the maker of heaven and earth. And we can also affirm with Joshua and Caleb that, and I quote, Numbers chapter 14, verse 17, the land we pass through and explored is exceedingly great. And good. If the Lord is pleased with us, He will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will swallow them up. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Unquote. Numbers chapter 14, verse 7 to verse 9. Beloved, let me take our passage for the day, which is from Matthew chapter 6, verse number 5 through verse 15. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be hurt because of their many ways. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This day, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people 
when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sin. Amen. When you pray. Beloved, this statement was made by our Lord Jesus Christ. That when we pray, we are not to be like the hypocrites. And for Jesus to say that when we pray, in fact, he was not making room for a choice. Prayer is not an option. It is not if we like. But for the Christian, prayer is a must. Prayer is inevitable. Prayer is compulsory. Prayer is a commandment. Paul wrote about praying that we should pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Jesus said, Men ought to pray. We ought to pray and not faint. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Prayer is important. Perseverance in prayer produces the power of focus and purpose. It produces passion. And perfection. Prayer produces excellence. Prayer produces focus and the power and the anointing we need to overcome life's challenges. Jesus spent time with God first before he must. In Mark chapter 1, verse 85, you will read among others that early in the morning Jesus arose and went to the mountainside to pray. One day, Jesus' disciples asked him to teach them how to pray. And that is the passage before us today. And my topic, Lord, teach us to pray. Can we call this the Lord's prayer? Or the disciples' prayer? For the disciples asked Jesus to teach us to pray. And Jesus told, Jesus taught them, this then is how you should pray. So probably we could call the prayer that the disciples of prayer, how the disciples were to do pray. And probably Jesus' own prayer may be what is recorded in John chapter 17. What is mostly referred to as Jesus' high priestly prayer, where he prayed for himself, for his immediate disciples, and for those who would follow after they have believed in the preaching of the gospel from the disciples. Now, let us have a look at some issues in the passage read, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 15. This then is how we should the expression this then is how you should pray. In the passage read by our Lord Jesus Christ, could also be translated to me pray along these lines or pray in this manner. Pray like this. This is a kind of a model or a pattern how your prayer should and could look like. Follow this pattern. Our Heavenly Father, hallowed be you. Our Father, our Father, we must pray to our hallowed Heavenly Father. When we come before Him, we should be humble before Him, for there is no one like Him, our Heavenly Father. Our, our Father in heaven. Prayer is like a child talking to his or her father. Our Father. When we approach God, we have approached Him as our Father. We are not only servants of God, but we are His children. We approach God as our Father. Once Jesus turned to a group of religious Jews 
and said to them, Ye are of your 